Okay, so now it should, you should see, it should turn red. It's red. Okay. All right, I'm going to go for you. Oh, wait, you know what? Make sure it's saying external camera. <laughs> We're live. Go ahead. Yep. I'm Denise with Artist Heart Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just saw so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice, lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. Big or as small as you want. Hey, Nisi. Hey, Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool, and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose and might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Well, hi, you guys. I'm Denise with Artists at Heart. I am so happy to be here with you today sharing some of my favorite art supplies. And I'm going to just use them and talk. And I am actually going to start with a pencil today. But I don't often do that, but these are my favorite Dixon Ticonderoga pencils. Awesome. If you're a teacher, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, they're super strong. They're great to sketch. And I'm going to sketch this out first. Just if you'd like to do it with me or later, I'm going to start. Can you see that? I'm going to go a little bit harder so you can see that this is, again, a great pencil for drawing, for writing, of course, for journaling, for school. And I'm just doing a, a real rough sketch. Whatever you guys are creating, you can change anything. You can change the shape of the vase. You can create different flowers. It doesn't have to look like mine. Now, I am going to go over it with Sharpie so you can see it a little bit better. But a sketch is a real light drawing. And again, this is a great pencil for writing and sketching. And you can drop it. I don't know if you guys have ever dropped a pencil. And then every time you sharpen it, the lead comes out. Well, that's because inside when you drop it, it cracks. And the cheap pencils, especially the ones that have like little unicorns and stuff on it, that's why that happens. So these are super strong. And um, again, you can make any design you want on your canvas. All right, so that's my rough sketch. I am using 16 by 20 canvas today. It's a stretch canvas. Okay, so it has a little frame and it already has gesso on it. So you're good to go. Really, really nice, durable, uh, excellent quality product. You don't have to do anything to it. It's prime gessoed, ready to go. And again, when I create, I like to paint the side of my canvas because I think it looks nicer. So I would wrap the paint all the way around. All right. Now that I've sketched it out for you guys, I am going to take a Sharpie marker and go over it. I usually just use the Sharpie, but again, if you um, are uncomfortable with starting with a Sharpie marker, you can start with the pencil. There's no right or wrong. The best part of acrylic paint is that it's opaque. So opaque means it's covering. It will cover anything. That's what's awesome. You can layer it. If you make a mistake, all you have to do is let it dry and you can paint over it. All right. So again, I'm sketching. I think I need another flower over here. And then here's my vase. You can totally make your vase different than mine. It's a little lopsided, but again, I'm going to show you 
how easily you can cover your mistakes. All right. Very, very easy. I feel like I need another flower over here. And overlapping gives them, uh, gives the artwork some dimension to it as well. And I can add the details later. I'm not even going to sketch in the details. So this project, you guys can use any supplies. Again, I love acrylic paint. I'm using a heavy body, Colliart, uh, really, really nice, rich pigment, which means really bold, beautiful colors. I only need one layer. I don't need to uh, add a couple coats. The thinner acrylic paints that you use, you're going to need to layer it with different coats. You can also use, I also have my Colliart markers here too. So it's just a really good quality project uh, product. These also have really bold colors. They have a broad tip and a fine tip. So I did this one here, same project. This is just on paper, printing paper, normal paper with markers. Okay. And again, here's the markers and I'm going to use the acrylic paint. I just want you to see that you can use any supplies that you want to. All right. Now when I paint you guys, I always use black last. I don't even put black on my plate, okay, because I'm really messy and I'll end up bumping into it. So I'm going to paint with the pink first. Now you, again, you can layer the pink if you want to. I use a dry brush, okay, and I'm just going to paint even over my Shopee line. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So this is going to be like the base coat for my flowers. You can do it different than me. You can use your favorite colors. I just, I'm feeling in the pink mood today. You can do reds and yellows. And I am going to show you a couple different ones. This is a very popular painting. I do paint parties. So I paint with a lot of people. And real quick, I just want to show you just different ways you guys can do this. Okay, here's one. Same idea, right? Just different style. So everyone has a different style while they're painting different colors. Still a very basic palette, which means you don't use every single color. Stick to a few colors. Here's another one. Okay, so there's yellows and oranges and purples and pinks and blue background. So these, again, this look at that distinct style. You can see those brush strokes. So I like to say that... When people are creating, it's like your handwriting. Your brush stroke is like your handwriting. Not that it looks like your handwriting. It just looks different than everybody else's. So you do have a step, even if you've never painted before, the way you hold your paintbrush, the amount of paint, the, um, the angle. There's just so many different things that make your painting look different than everybody else's. And that's what makes art so amazing. So whether you're Van Gogh or Monet or Matisse, right? They had a very distinct style to their artwork. Now, again, I could just paint in all of this and add highlights later, or I can kind of mix different colors, right? I'm not even washing off my brush, okay? I like to mix right on there. And I like to go in the direction of the flowers. Can you see that? I have a little glare from my light. Let me, let me move my, ooh, that's worse. Here, I'll go, can't, I think that's a little better. And I just bumped into my blue. So I got a, actually a really pretty purple. But sometimes your mistakes make happy little accidents. I'm all about happy little accidents. So look at that. So again, I'm just kind of going in there. I'm covering up that black Sharpie line. And I'm kind of sectioning off the different flowers now. All right. If you want, you can even, you know, paint in the whole flower, that fuchsia color. It's really pretty. It's called magenta. I called it fuchsia, but it's called magenta. <laughs> and you can make a lighter version by mixing white acrylic paint. You're always going to go through white more than any other color. And you're gonna always have a lot of black because you use minimal black, even in this painting. Even though I have a lot of black in this painting, it's still not that much. All right, again, so I, I do like texture, 
but some people like to make it really smooth. So you can just paint it really smooth. And I love 16 by 20 canvas, but a lot of people also like 11 by 14. So 11 by 14 is my next popular size. So again, if you're working with children, 11 by 14 is nice because they could get done a little quicker. Uh, uh, 16 by 20, that's what I'm doing now. That's my most popular size. So when I do a paint party, I'm usually doing the 16 by 20. If you're at home creating all the time and you don't wanna use a canvas all the time, there's other options available for you. I just love the canvas. They really make nice presents for people. People love to receive artwork. You can customize it, write like your favorite quote on there. All right. And again, I'm not even worrying about being too perfect at all. And I'll add some highlights later. So I haven't watered it down at all. The nice part about this acrylic paint is it's heavy bodied. So it's thick. It's not dripping down my canvas. It's again, one, one layer is all you need. There are other acrylics out there that are a lighter bodied acrylic paint and you're going to need to add several coats. Well, I don't want to add several coats. So that's why I like this painting, this paint product. Again, it's nice and thick. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. And when you're creating, always think about the color background you want to do because you want to have some contrast. I feel like I need to make this bigger. It could even be drooping down a little bit more. See that? Did you see how I just covered right over that Sharpie marker? And I could throw some greenery in there as well. So if I want to do some highlights, again, I'm not even going to wash my brush up. I'm just going to take this brush and I'm going to dip it in some white paint and I could just add some, some white swirls in here. I can wait for it to dry. So then if you wait for it to dry, you won't get that mix. Do you see how it's mixing? And you can see my brush stroke. If I wait for it to dry, it'll sit on top of it. So you'll be layering it. But I like both. So I'm just going to keep going. And again, I like when the brush strokes follow the shape of whatever it is that I'm creating. And this kit comes with 24 colors, but you can always mix the acrylic paint and make more colors. One of my favorite things to do is to mix colors because it's fun. So I accidentally made a purple on my plate. My I dropped my paintbrush in the blue, but look at how pretty that is. So I'm going to show you. So I have all this paint on my brush. It's pink and white. And now I'm going to take a touch of this light blue. And I'm going to get this beautiful lavender color. Do you see that? Really, it was by mistake. No one knows your mistakes, but you and me. Really? So like people are like, how did you make that purple? Oh, I dropped my paintbrush in the paint. <laughs> and I tell people that all the time. Oh, no, I made purple. Oh, yay. Lucky you. I mean, purple is beautiful. Look at that. So again, you can um, think outside the box. Do something different. Add some purple in there, right? It doesn't matter if it was intentional or not there. Can you see that purple? And I just, you guys, I use these hefty styrofoam plates for my palette. Cause they're look, doesn't go through. And I don't use paper like paper paper because it absorbs the moisture from the paint. So if you have a paper plate and you put acrylic in there, it's going to suck the moisture out of it and it's going to dry up quicker. So that's why I like uh, the styrofoam and it cleans up easy, right? Right in the trash. You can reuse it if you want to, but mine go right in the trash. All right. Plus, of course, you can have them for your picnics all summer long. So anyway, I'm just putting a little purple in there just to make it a little bit different. 
Okay. And again, you guys do whatever you want to with the colors of the vase. So I put a lot of green on there. I could always change it and make the background green, but then what about the leaves? Remember, I got to have contrast. So I would do the leaves after I do my background. So I'm going to leave my flowers alone for a minute. And I'm going to, and again, I'm not even going to worry about being perfect. So I am going to put my brush in water. I got a water cup behind here. I'm hiding it. I'm trying to be neat, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the background. I'm going to use blue, okay? And I like to see the brush strokes. I like to see, like, the white mixed in. You can do it flat. I'm, this is called a flat paint brush, too. You can just do the whole thing, one plain blue color, like that. But I, I like when it has texture and lights and darks and you know like to me that's just okay a lot of people do it no you know again to each his own so i always give people the option but i'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush and i'm going to mix it in there and now it's going to give it a little bit of dimension i think it's more interesting and remember you want to wrap your paint around the side of the canvas I'm in the mood for a bright, fun, flowery painting. And I always tell people, you don't have to keep up with me. I have done this painting many times. So, you know, see how the that white paint just gives it a little, you can see the paint, the brush marks. I like that. Paint the edge of it. Now you could, if you want, water down your acrylic paint if you want a more transparent look. I like the opaqueness. I like that it's not see-through. And the more you go over this where you see that, if you keep going over that, I'm going to show you. It's going to, all those brush strokes are going to disappear and it's going to turn into one color. Okay. I don't like that. I like to see the brush strokes. I like to see the lights. Those are called tints, T-I-N-T, -T, tints of color. I like to see those. And again, I'm going to wrap it around the top. And I'm not worrying too much about the edge either. So if you go out of the line, it's no big deal because we, we can outline it later. We can go back into it later with details. I always do the details at the end. So again, just think we're working in layers here. All right, so here's what my plate looks like now. I'm going to put my brush down. So these are the little bottles, but they go really far. So again, I just need a little bit more white paint. So I'm just going to give it, so it has a nice pop top. I'm going to give it a little squeeze, okay? Close it so it doesn't dry out. And do you guys see how thick that is? Look at that. There's a thick... It's pretty thick, so that's considered a heavy-bodied acrylic paint. And again, the pigment, the color is beautiful. It spreads really nice. The colors are lovely. So right now, I have like blue, three different blues out here. So you can choose from, you know, a, a variation of blues. I could even have the background different blues. Right now I'm just using cerulean blue and the white paint. All right. And you could put 
a flower at the bottom, which I forgot, but I, I'll do that next. All right, you know what? I'm going to show you my easel real quick because I want to move it. So I'm using this U.S. Art Supply, really, really nice easel. It has these little ears that you can put out if you have a larger canvas. You can put the canvas vertical, horizontal, and they collapse. So you guys, I have 200 of them <laughs> for my paint parties. And I'm only showing you this because I want to move it. All right, and there's the mess behind my, I'm hiding it from you guys. But look at, this is how they collapse, just folds in half. The back comes in like that, poof. Okay, watch again. The leg comes out, opens. Okay, yes, I've used it a million times, so I've painted all over it. Adds character, right? Go back down. I'm trying to get the, um, and this is how I paint the top. All right, so you guys see that I did the side, but look at the top. So just flip your canvas. and then. Paint it. I just think it looks so much nicer. You could hang it right on the wall. As long as the edges are painted, you could always get a frame too. But again, I think it looks way better with a nice painted edge. Okay. And it dries really quick. Did I mention how quick it dries? Especially if it's warm. So it's warm here today. Low humidity, so everything's drying quick. Okay, let's see if you can see it better now. I think so. I think that's a little better. Less glare, right? All right. One day I'll have a real studio. This is AKA house bedroom studio. <laughs> now my office. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, well, I could do the vase. We want to try different colors or should I stick to the black and the white? The black and the white really makes it pop. So I don't want to use black yet. Remember I told you I'm waiting till the end for black because I get it everywhere. So I want to stay. I could use a different blue for the table. Oops. Sorry, I shut that. <laughs> I shut it off on my phone, but not on my computer. All right. So so you guys, I am, just so you know, I'm on my Apple desktop streaming live. Okay, so again, I'm going to use, this one is Deep Cyan Blue. I just put it right on top of the other one. I'll do my table that way. Okay. So I'm going to do a deeper blue just for fun. You could do purple orange mix it up you could do a checkered tablecloth you do you have a tablecloth in your house you can make it the color of your tablecloth in your house right a lot of people like to paint things to you know like to put in their kitchen so maybe your kitchen's yellow and you want to do yellow up to you i paint according to my mood I feel it. I feel a sneeze coming out. So, give me a second. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, I couldn't even talk. It's a little allergy season here. So, you guys, I am in Cleveland, Ohio, and it hasn't rained in about two and a half weeks, which is very rare for Cleveland. But because it hasn't rained, there's a lot of pollen in the air. Like you could see it all over everything. And um, it's kicking up allergies. So, excuse me, I have a tickle in my nose. Do you guys suffer from allergies too? I'm going to put a little bit of white in this one. So look at when you add white to that one, it's almost the same blue as the other one. It's 
it's almost like a highlight, right? All right, again, I'm not gonna worry about being too perfect. Let's see, maybe fix it a little bit there. All right, so do we decide what color we wanna do this? Should I stick with the black? I know I want to put some leaves in. So let's add some greenery, okay? And again, this is still wet. You guys can see how wet it is. It's going to lose some of that shine as it dries. But that's how you would know. And it doesn't matter. You could just keep going over and over it. So I'm going to start putting some greenery in here. Let's do a sprig over here. Can you see that? I'm going to use a darker green so you can see it. It's a little bit better, right? And I have, again, a variety of greens over here as well. So that's what I'm talking about, contrast. So because the background is light blue and my green that I chose is pretty light, I'm not getting the contrast that I want. I can outline it. That'll make it stand out. How's that look? Again, I'm going to look for a, a deeper green. I can put some leaves in my flowers up here. I could add some green inside there if I wanted to. And again, if you want to wait for it to dry and draw it out, you can do that too. So do you see there's not a lot of contrast there? The blue is and the green are kind of blending together. So what I want to do is I want to, let's look for a darker green. Oh, look at this one. So this is called Verdian. See that? It's a little bit darker of a green. Again, I want it to stand out from my blue. Can you see that? Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So I'm just going to mix it right in there. See that? All right. And again, you could always go back into the leaves up here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is going to be my black, but I'm going to give this a minute to dry and talk to you guys again about the different ways. So you guys can use markers. You can use the canvas, which is a stretched canvas. Oh, I got to do the bottom, right? So I would flip it and get the bottom. I'll do that in a little bit. But Really, another wonderful thing that you can do, especially if you create a lot, are these pads, okay? So these pads are mixed media. That means you can use any art supply you want inside of them. You see that? Mixed media. So you can use watercolor paint, acrylic paint. You can use markers, color pencils. So this one, I wanted to show you the difference between acrylic paints on this pad versus the canvas. Okay. Same paints. I use the same paint. So this pad is awesome. So look at this. Here's the paper. Look at the back. Oh, I'm going to just rip it out. It's perforated. But look, it didn't even go through to the back. Okay. So this is acrylic paint on here. And look at that. So you've got this. And then I was going to rip it out anyway. So look at this. It comes out. Look at the nice clean line there. And look at that. This, this one's marker, you guys. So, and here we have acrylic paint. So again, this is, if you're creating all the time, this is a great pad to use any supplies in. Really durable. Okay. Holds acrylic paint beautifully. This one you can pop right in a frame and it'll look great. Or you can just tape it to the refrigerator. Okay, you guys, I got my nice sketch tape right here, right? This is what, I, this is in every room, but this is just taped up to the wall. Cause this is just, you guys, this is just computer paper with markers. This is my pad, which is mixed media. Mixed media means you can use any supplies on it, but look at how nice the acrylic paint came out on this and didn't go through the back. Love those. Okay, so the mixed media, again, you can use anything, but they also make a specific watercolor pad. So if you love watercolor, 
this is the watercolor pad that you can create on. Now, I like to take it out. It's messy, all right? But you guys, so it also rips right out. It's thicker and it absorbs water better. You can still use the watercolor paint and the mixed media pad, but this is better, okay? Because it's thicker and heavier, made specifically for watercolor paint. So I made one of these projects just to show you. So what I did was I just took my scotch tape and I taped it down to this board because I didn't want to get the other pages dirty. Okay. So I ripped it out of here. I taped it to this heavy duty again. So this is considered um, transparent, transparent. Do you see how light that is? So when I go out of the lines, you guys can see my lines still. It's see-through. It's transparent. That's what water paint is. It's watery looking. Okay. You add water to it. And what did I use? I used my um, crafts for all watercolor paint, little baby tubes. You only need a little bit. You add water and you paint it in again. So if I layered it more, I could cover up some of those places where I went out, I can outline it. I just wanted you guys to see the difference between a marker, an acrylic canvas, and what did I do with the other one? Anyways, but this is transparent watercolor paint on watercolor paper. Very nice. Also, I'll show you guys how thick it is. Doesn't go back either. And it doesn't, um, what's the word I want to use? buckle. So a lot of times watercolor paper, if it's not thick enough, it will buckle. This is really, really nice, heavy duty. So again, whether you're using watercolor paint or acrylic paint, these books are awesome if you don't want to use a canvas every single time. I like the canvas. So when I'm doing paint parties, I'm using canvas. So before I add the black, let's just kind of go back into it and put a little bit more of the highlights in here. What do you guys think of those flowers? I'm just going to put, maybe I need a little bit more white. You guys want me to do black and white for the vase? Or should I try a different color? I could do yellow or orange. So let's go back into here and add some highlights in my flower. How's that look? Do you like it better with the highlights? Little sprigs of white. I'm gonna put a little bit of purple. And just keep going. And again, do your brush stroke in that direction of your flower. You can blend it in there. You can put a bumblebee in there if you want to put a bumblebee in there. However you want. So look at this one. To me, that one's too stark. Like it's too much. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to go over and soften it up. Do you see the difference? All right. So now I'm going to do my vase. Did we come up with a color we should do it? What color? Should I stick with the black and white so you guys can see? So everyone loves to jump right into black paint because it's so dramatic. But you don't start with black, guys. And a lot of times people say, where's the black on my plate? And I'm like, you'll get it later. because. Sometimes they don't want to listen. <laughs> Shocking, right? So how about, let's see, black, white, black, white. Or do we want to do white, black, white, black? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here's, maybe, yeah, let's do that. How's that? Do you see how dramatic that is? And again, you want to use black last just so you don't get it in your other colors because it'll muddy your colors up. And, you know, I think people also 
are afraid to use a lot of paint. I use a ton of paint. I just load up my brush. And look, I'm just gonna go down. I decided I wanted my vase to go down a little bit further. So you don't have to stay inside the lines. And this is a really nice summer, fun, fresh painting. All right, but you guys can do it in the fall, change it to sunflower. Sunflowers are really popular in the fall. It doesn't have to be in a vase, it could be in a garden. You guys can always add a little sparkle to it if you want. This would be a good porch painting too. All right, I'm going crooked from the side. Let me let me try to pay attention here. All right. Do you see how the black just totally made a difference, right? Maybe you put your favorite quote on here. Now, if you guys don't have a steady hand and you want to outline with a Sharpie, you can do that too. Or if you want to sign your name, you can always sign your name with a Sharpie. So I always bring Sharpies to the parties with me. All right. And then again, if you want to look at the difference, I have two white and two black on this one, but the other one I have more. So if you want to outline it, it'll kind of tie the black into it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be the whole thing. You could just outline it in certain areas to section off the flowers. Right. Do you like it better with or without the black? So whenever I use this paint, you guys just give it a little shake and then a little squeeze. I do a little at a time because I don't want to waste it. All right, let's do another little outline over here. Now, I paint quick, and I told you guys I have done this many times, but this the average painting for this would be two hours. My paint parties are in generally two hours, so that would be roughly the amount of time. Now, some people take longer, and some people are really quick, but just like everything else. So I'm just giving you a rough estimate. Now, if you want to do this and take your time, of course, that's fantastic. Because I think art is really, really relaxing. Paint is really therapeutic. So I, I just did a wellness event. That's why I had 200 easels. <laughs> I could add a little bit of black to my leaves so you guys can see them a little bit better. Now, what happens if you don't like the black? You paint. The only thing is when you paint over it, you got to let it dry. You cannot paint over anything wet. So again, if you do something and you're like, oh, I hate that, you can go over it. I actually did a mural where I outlined the whole, I outlined the whole thing in black and I hated it. And I usually love black outline, but I actually painted back. I had to wait for it to dry, which didn't take that long. And then I went back over it and painted over it. I just didn't like it. So again, there is that. Now, what else did I want to show you guys today? So there's acrylic paint on canvas. I showed you guys acrylic paint on the pad and watercolor paint. And I know I showed you before because my phone rang. My Otterbox 
one of my favorite supplies. This is the Outer Box Defender. Okay, I'm sure your case is not covered with paint, but I do take a ton of pictures and I'm I paint every day. So anyway, this is my outer box and um, it protects my phone. I have, I better knock on wood. I've never broke a phone. So it has a rubber case around it and it just protects my phone no matter how many times I've dropped it or I get paint on it or I get water on it. So I mentioned before um, sunflowers. I just have a, an acrylic sunflower painting here. So with the Cali Art, you guys have 24 colors. Again, you can mix your own. So this is from, I use the mixed media pad. So this one was for me, right? So I'm using the mixed media pad and acrylic. Okay. I, I was using the back to test out stuff, but even that did not go through to the front and the front did not go through to the back. Very, very nice, durable. If you're going to paint and create a lot, the pads are amazing. I love them. All right, what else can I tell you guys about? I forgot to erase, but um, here's the brushes. So you guys, I use bigger brushes, but if you are working smaller, like in a sketchbook or on a smaller canvas, these brushes, I have a whole bunch of them. These brushes are great. Can you see that? Because they come in a variety of sizes. You have flat brushes, pointy brushes, and then I keep them in my organizer. So I try to stay organized the best possible way I can. All right. So again, these are good brushes. And I wanted to show you, I told you guys before, if you want to bling up your painting a little bit, if you want to add a little bit of sparkle, I have um, one of my favorite products, okay, is the Mod Podge. Love these. So I, I bring these to all my paint parties, okay? And again, I am a certified art teacher, so this is non-toxic. You can use it with kids. You can use it with adults. It does have a funny glue smell, but it's non-toxic. So I'm very careful about what I use. And this is, even though it has a funny smell, I'm preparing you when you open it. It's beautiful stuff, non-toxic, okay? So it's a glue sealer. So it's going to look like glue when you put it on. I'll show you in a minute. I, I did it on this one so you guys could see. So do you see on the black? Let's get a good clip. See it? And I added some of the flowers too. Do you see that? So it dries clear and sparkly. Okay, now I'm going to swap it out. Put this. It your painting has to be dry. Okay, you can't add the Mod Podge on a wet painting. So this would definitely be a different day, or yeah, I would wait a whole day because you want to make sure that acrylic paint is absolutely dry. Now it's gonna look like glue because it is, but you want to put on a thin coat of it. Let me let me scoop this in. So it has a little bit. So again, this is the dry one. I'm going to scoop it up. Look at it. It's white. Okay. And I'm going to put it on this one so you can see it. Now, you don't want to put it on too thick. And kids, you got to tell kids this. You want to put a thin layer on because otherwise it'll have like a white cast to it. You want to spread it out. Now, you're going to see the white. Now, can you imagine if I painted that on the wet black, it would just end up a big gray mess. You wouldn't see any glitter. If you painted it on wet um, paint, you won't see the glitter. So the paint's got to be dry and I'm just spreading it out. So I'm putting a nice thin coat on. And spreading it out. And then it'll dry all sparkly and pretty. So I don't use, I have to tell you, I don't use glitter anymore. I just, I just threw it away and I hate throwing things away, but I cannot stand loose glitter, but I love glitter. And most of the kids and people that I know, especially for the holidays, or you just want to add a little pizzazz to your painting. So this is the best stuff. If you, and this is a sealer too. So again, it works on wood, it works on metal, it works on glass. <gasps> I forgot the glass. Wait, I wanted to show you something else too. All right. So you guys, I also do wine glass painting, but just, let's just say you're doing, um, again, another, so I did this one too, to show you that you guys can work on any surface. 
you cannot use regular acrylic paint on glass, okay, because it'll just wipe up. So I use, this is folk art, I have a whole bucket of it, because again, I do these paint parties, you guys, Ugh. but I wanted to show you. <laughs> so these are all folk art multi-surface acrylic paints. So it has to be a multi-surface paint, okay, it must be multi-surface paint or it's gonna come off. It'll just peel right off, all right? So what you do if you're gonna work on glass, and it doesn't have to be a wine glass, although I like wine glasses. I don't like empty wine glasses, but I like wine glasses. So it, um, you have to use the multi-surface, okay? And I also like, see how pretty the bottom is? So I paint the bottom of this, and then it, you can see it through the top. Very, very nice, right? So you paint right on the glass, but make sure you wipe your glass down with rubbing alcohol first. You want to use rubbing alcohol because it'll take off all the dirt and the oil, like the oils from your fingers. So, oh, cheers. Um, so make sure that you wipe down your surface, whatever it is that you're painting on. Okay. And I'm just going to show you real quick. I forgot about this, but I wanted, I did this glass just for today's painting. Okay. And I only did one side of it because I wanted to show you guys. All right, and I'm just gonna, I don't want it to get mixed up with my other acrylic. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cheat and I'm just gonna dip the brush right in the little bottle, okay? And no special paintbrush, again, it's just um, no odor, doesn't smell. Okay, watch. Now when you got, if you're painting wine glasses, you wanna stay about an inch from the top because you don't wanna drink on top of the paint. It, again, it, it's just, it'll probably wear off from the acidity. So I would just say stay down about an inch and paint your flowers however you want, right? So I did um, some pink, some mauve. All right, after you, again, so stay down a little bit far. You can go down as far as you want. You can outline it with black. If you're gonna do this, you just let it set for two weeks. So don't wash it for two weeks. That will set the paint. And then you can walk, hand, hand wash anything that's hand painted. I've put mine in the top shelf of the dishwasher. But again, this is really fun project to do with your girlfriends for bachelorette parties, for house party. You can customize it with your favorite colors. Uh, again, so this one and the multi-surface folk art paint is awesome. And one other thing you can use when you're doing glass, or any surface. Okay, I have another one here. This one, do you see all the details compared to this one? So this one is just the paint. If you guys want, you can use, hold on, let me get them. I have them over here. Oh, I thought I put them here. You guys, I forgot I was organizing and I forgot to show you my organizers, but these are my little plastic bins. These are Sharpie oil-based markers. So that's really, really good for these, okay? Really good oil-based Sharpie markers. Again, I have a vat of them because uh, I've done wine glass painting with 100 people. So I need a lot of these. So these are Sharpie oil-based markers and you can do smaller designs with these, more intricate things. Some people like to do, use just the markers instead of the paint. All right, so that again is another idea. Oh, and then I just wanna show you one more thing and then we're done. Okay. so. I love the sparkle Mod Podge, but if you're looking to seal something and you don't want the sparkle, you can use the matte one. So matte is, it looks exactly the same as the other one. I don't know if I can open it right now and I have to bang it to get it open. Again, it's the glue, you guys. So it's a glue. This is great for collages and to seal anything. So if you want to seal your artwork, if you want to make a placemat, if you want to do a photo collage, you can shellac the whole thing with this. No, it dries matte, which means it's not shiny and there's no sparkle in this one. So this one's starting to dry. So you can see as it's drying, the white part is going to dry clear and you're going to end up with the sparkle. So I say keep creating, think outside the box, be happy, make art. Let me know if there's anything else you want to make and 
I will be creating with you guys again real soon. You guys, I am Denise with Artist at Heart, and thanks for creating with me. If you have any questions about products or supplies, feel free to let me know. You guys, we have a chat going on. I have Randy behind the scenes helping me. Thank you, Randy. So Randy is there to answer any questions for you guys. We'll do another one, like another back to school one. You got to have these pencils, guys. Got to have these pencils. Don't buy those sparkly pencils because they don't work. These things are awesome. Number one pencil. So, oh yeah. Oh, one more thing. I keep saying that because I put it all out here, you guys. Here's my pencils. <laughs> I got these. These are a three pack and they're stackable, which is awesome. But they're, um, you can, I put pencils in them, markers in them. I'm really working hard to get organized. So again, this is where I keep my awesome pencils. Again, you guys keep creating, think outside the box. If you think you can paint on it, you probably can. Picture frames, picture frames are another one. I don't know, just use whatever you can. Just customize it, make it your own with your own designs and your favorite colors. I'm Denise and I will see you guys again real soon. Thanks for watching. Bye you guys.